In this video, I want to talk about conjugacy in SN. So this is the topic of the end of section 4.3 of Dummett and Foot. And I want to start with this proposition, which is proposition 10, which says, if you have two elements of SN, sigma and tau, then suppose sigma has cycle decomposition. First cycle is A1, A2, up through AK1. Next cycle is B1, B2, up to BK2. Then we want to understand the cycle decomposition of the conjugate of sigma by tau. That is the permutation tau sigma tau inverse. And the result is that the cycle decomposition of tau sigma tau inverse is the first cycle is now tau of A1, then tau of A2, up to tau of AK1. Then we have tau of B1 starting the next cycle, tau of B2 up to tau applied to BK2. So what we're saying is we have all of the same cycle lengths, but everywhere you had like A1 up through AK1, now you have tau applied to those numbers in the cycle. So what are we seeing? We're seeing that the conjugate of sigma by tau is obtained from sigma by replacing every i that you see in the cycle decomposition of sigma with tau applied to i. The proof is not difficult. The idea is going to be to see what happens to two consecutive integers that are in the cycle decomposition of sigma. So if sigma of i is equal to j, that means that in the cycle decomposition of sigma, we have an i followed by a j. Well, what happens when you take the permutation tau sigma tau inverse and apply it to tau of i? So this is sort of the clever idea. You might think, oh, I want to take this new permutation and apply it to i, but it's more valuable to see what happens when you apply it to tau of i. So tau sigma tau inverse applied to tau of i. Well, permutation multiplication is associative. It's just composition of permutations. So you can move the parentheses and see that what you're taking is tau sigma of tau inverse tau, which is the identity applied to i. So this just is tau of sigma of i. And all we know about sigma of i is that it's j. So this is tau of j. That's basically the whole proof. What's happening is if you have an i and then a j in the cycle decomposition of sigma, then where does tau of i get sent? by this permutation tau sigma tau inverse, we just saw that tau of i gets sent to tau of j. So if i follows j in the cycle decomposition of sigma, tau of, I, tau of j, sorry, if we have i then j in the cycle decomposition of sigma, then we have tau of i then tau of j in the cycle decomposition of tau sigma tau inverse. Okay, so what have we seen? When we take sigma and when we conjugate it, the cycles get all changed. The, you know, within each cycle, you're applying tau to every element. But the lengths of the cycles don't change. So the lengths of the cycles in the decomposition of a permutation into a product of disjoint cycles is a really important thing attached to a permutation in SN. Let me give a definition. If sigma in SN is the product of disjoint cycles, with lengths n1, n2, up through nr, where we want to include cycles of length 1. So like the sum of these might be 1s. We include the fixed points as cycles of length 1. And you write these numbers in non-decreasing order. So n1 is less than or equal to n2, up through nr. Then these integers in order are called the cycle type of the permutation sigma. So I'm going to pause and erase and tell you the relationship between cycle type and conjugacy. We've just defined cycle type. Let's give one more definition. If n is a positive integer in Z plus, a partition of n is a non-decreasing sequence of positive integers whose sum is n. Okay, so it's just a list of integers that add up to n, but you order them from smallest to largest. So what have we seen? 
we've seen that the cycle type of a permutation is uh, a cycle type of a permutation in Sn is a partition of n. Why? Because every integer is in some cycle. So when you write your permutation as a product of disjoint cycles, if you add up the cycle lengths, you have to get n. And cycle type, by convention, we write the smallest cycles first, followed by the larger ones at the end. OK, so just to be clear, because this is potentially confusing about fixed points where we generally don't write the cycles, what is the cycle type of the permutation 1, 2 times 3, 4 as an element of S5? Well, it's an element in S5, so it's a permutation on five things. We have 1, 2, 3, and 4. 5 isn't written anywhere, which means 5 is a fixed point of this permutation. So just as a convention, you don't usually write cycles of length 1 when you're writing a permutation as a product of disjoint cycles. So what is the cycle type of this permutation? 5 is a fixed point. It's in a cycle of size 1. So we include that in the cycle type. And then there are these two cycles of length 2. So the cycle type is 1, 2, 2. 1 plus 2 plus 2 is 5. So this is a partition of 5. And what did we see in the first uh, result that we discussed in this video is that sigma and the conjugate of sigma by the permutation tau have the same cycle type. So inside of each cycle, you go from here to here by applying tau to each element, but the cycles all have the same length. So they have the same cycle type. Okay, so we've seen that conjugate partitions have the same cycle type. And the next thing we're gonna prove is that the converse is true also, that two elements in Sn are conjugate in Sn if and only if they have the same cycle type. Okay, so first I wanna say a few things. One, the statement that we just saw that conjugate partitions have the same cycle type, that is the forward direction of this statement. The two elements in Sn that are conjugate in Sn implies same cycle type. So we just need to prove the converse. But even before that, let me just say a consequence of this is that conjugacy classes in Sn are determined by cycle type. And every cycle type is a partition of n. So how many conjugacy classes are there in Sn? It's the number of partitions of n. So if you've never thought about this function before that counts the number of partitions of n, uh, there's a ton of really interesting stuff out there. Studying the behavior of this function is a difficult number theory problem. So this is like a number theoretic thing that shows up naturally in studying conjugacy classes in uh, one of the most basic core examples of groups that you study in a group theory course. So I find that very interesting. And if you want to talk more about the function that counts the number of partitions of n, that's something I would love to do in office hours. OK, so let's prove this statement. What we have to prove is that if two partitions in Sn have the same cycle type, then they are conjugates. So we're going to suppose that sigma 1 and sigma 2 have the same cycle type. And now what we're going to do is write each one of those permutations as a product of disjoint cycles. And we're going to write them with the shortest cycles first. So in the same order corresponding to cycle type. So uh, length smallest first, and we're going to include the one cycles. OK, so what are we getting? So if you ignore the parentheses between the cycles, for sigma 1, you're writing down the integers from 1 up to n in some order. And for sigma 2, you're writing down the integers from 1 up to n in some order. And because these two permutations have the same cycle type, when you put the parentheses in, they go in the same places because they have the same number of cycles of each size. So what are we going to do? We are going to give a particular permutation so that we can write one of these sigmas as the conjugate of the other 
by this permutation tau. Where does tau come from? We're going to define tau to be the function that takes 1 up through n to 1 up through n by taking the ith integer in the list that we've just written down for sigma 1 and sending it to the ith integer in the list that we've just written down for sigma 2. So uh, we're sending the first thing for sigma 1 to the first thing for sigma 2, the second thing for sigma 1 to the second thing for sigma 2. And one thing I want to say uh, before we pause and erase and explain the rest of the proof is that what's true about this function tau? Well, the sigma 1 list is 1 up through n in some order, and the sigma 2 list is 1 up through n in some order. So we're taking the numbers 1 up through n and sending them to 1 up through n. So tau really is a permutation in Sn. So now I'm going to pause and erase. And I'll tell you how these three permutations, tau, sigma 1, and sigma 2, are related to each other. We've just defined this permutation from 1 up to n to 1 up to n, tau, that is given by uh, sigma 1 and sigma 2. And how are these three permutations related? Tau sigma 1, tau inverse is sigma 2. So that's the end of the proof once we've justified this claim, because now we started with these two permutations having the same cycle type, and we have shown that they are conjugate by actually writing down a permutation tau such that sigma 2 is the conjugate of sigma 1 by tau. OK, so why is this true? Well, from the uh, proof of the previous um, statement from the beginning of this video, if i, j occur as an ordered pair within a cycle of sigma 1, then tau i, tau j are the corresponding ordered pair within the cycle, within a cycle of tau sigma 1, tau inverse. But we defined tau so that this will make the cycles of uh, tau sigma 1, tau inverse exactly match up with the cycles of sigma 2. So that's the end of the proof. I will say that this is exactly the kind of argument that is much easier to understand if you work through an example on your own in like S5 or something like that. And on page 176 of Dominant Foot, there are some uh, examples for you to stare at, and then you can come up with your own examples too.